Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my fellow designers, and uh, welcome to the latest episode of uh, Brightler UI release announcement for Q1 of 2022. Brightler UI is uh, Eden's digital application design system where we gather inspirations from existing Eden projects and uh, publish them as either designer assets or developer resources. Once every quarterly, we will release new materials for everyone across the research and development community. Uh, however, today's uh, meeting is oriented more for designers. So if you're on the technical side, we will send out more information soon via email. Uh, this episode of release meeting is brought to you, brought to you by the Bright Leader UI team, formerly known as PX Blue. My name is Huayun Huang. I am the designer who maintains the design side of Bright Layer UI. And along with me is the awesome Bright Layer UI squad, which consists of uh, uh, Joe, uh, Tom, Hector, Jeff, Siraj, Renato, Ivan, and uh, Joao. Uh, for today, we're going to do a quick recap of what happened in Q4 of 2021. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our documentation updates. And uh, for Figma users, we have some new Figma resources coming in. And finally, we have some um, future announcement for what's coming up in Q2. So first, what happened in quarter four of 2021? Uh, if you haven't noticed it yet, uh, we are no longer referring to ourselves as PX Blue. We are now called the Bright Layer UI under the Eden's new Bright Layer rebranding for the digital strategy. We also added 38 new icons uh, as shown on the right, and we deprecated 17 of them from the design side only. Uh, because they are essentially duplicated with the existing material design icons. For Figma users, we added two components to the Figma components sticker sheet. There's now the progress icons that can show you, as the name suggests, progress or percentile, percentage of a certain status. We also added multi-line text fields. Okay, now back to quarter one, 2022. First, let's talk about the documentation updates. In quarter one, 2022, we added a new design pattern tables. Tables are frequently used to display structured data, especially in Eden's data heavy industrial context. And uh, as usual, the table guideline is also built upon material design's existing guideline, but we expanded on that to better suit with Eden's data heavy, data driven industrial need. And you can read more about the tables uh, at this uh, link at the bottom. Um, this this page is uh, similar to our ex all our existing patterns. Um, the page contains information and the graphics to ensure that we uh, to ensure that you understand uh, where the design extend is. Uh, essentially, how crazy you can design a table and the what to do and what not to do. Specifically, there are patterns, there are appearance, uh, what the table can contain their behaviors, uh, how the user can interact with the table, and then their design specs to help you really nail down the details to, per, to, to do a pixel perfect design for the table. One thing I like to highlight though is um, we tend to notice um, in our day-to-day -day conversations with uh, everybody in the design community is uh, table tend to be abused. Uh, so there's uh, always this uh, seemingly philosophical debate of uh, where to use tables and uh, where to use uh, more listy structure. So as you can see here on the right page, uh, the thing on the left is a list, uh, sorry, a table, and the thing on the right is a list. 
So tables and lists, they have similar properties. A lot of times you can fit a certain data set in either tables or lists, uh, but they're used in slightly different circumstances. Uh, and uh, sometimes one might be better than the other. So tables, um, they tend to break down the data and uh, allow you to ex examine the data piece by piece. Um, you can easily examine the data via a column uh, if you scan through the column. While for lists, it's more intuitive because uh, it's breaking, broken down entry by entry. So essentially row by row. It encourages you to uh, view each item as individual items. So there are pages such as uh, alarm pages, uh, dashboards, traditionally at Eaton, we see, still see those used more as lists. Um, but this is not essentially saying that one is superior than the other. Um, they, if you examine the detail, it will be different from, uh, in terms of spatial arrangement, scannability, data lab labeling, et cetera. So as you can see on the right, we also have a section on our web page to talk about the difference. Uh, another highlight is uh, be careful with table tables on mobile devices. Um, it's very painful on the mobile phone or mobile devices that includes tablets in general um, for the reason that it tortures your users. It drains device performance really heavily if you have a lot of data rows at the same time. Uh, it also implies a lot of data transmission over a limited internet connection. And uh, finally, uh, for React Native projects, we are still exploring the technical boundaries for this design. Hey, can I ask a question about that last note? Um, what, what does that mean, exploring the technical boundaries for this design pattern for React Native? Does that mean that it's not available yet to use uh, bright layer UI kind of themed tables in a React Native app? Yes, yeah, so, so on the technical side, uh, the React Native, we don't have a theme that's wrapping around the React Native paper yet. Okay. Uh, React Native paper, if you don't know, is the material implementation on React Native. We don't have the yeah. wrapper for that yet and they're paid table is really, really crude, if I may say. Okay. And the second, there are certain interactions like this uh, sticky table header as shown on the bottom right here, where you scroll sure. and then they pin on the top. That is uh, unknown on our side. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, not, uh, we don't have a bright layer UI themed table yet just for use in a React native app, but there seems to also be a question of should there even be <laughs> tables used uh, in yeah. a React Native app in the first place? OK, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, just uh, really be careful when you try to use tables on mobile. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Great question, by the way. OK, uh, next one we have, uh, we would like to highlight the new tools for color pickers. Um, we now. We just added a new inspect color inspectors um, for those of you who would like to really get into the details of uh, colors. We now include this uh, little tool where you can click on a color patch. You can look at its color value at different in the different color spaces. Uh, you can click to copy, and uh, finally, if you turn that toggle switch on you will be able to view the selected color against another color. So uh, this is to the color contrast ratio is for this uh, WCAG 2.0 requirements that um, text contrast has to be above 4.5 to one and the uh, icons or large text, uh, there's a certain definition of, for that. Um, icons and the uh, large text and the, any other UI elements has to be above 3, point, uh, 3 to 0 to fulfill its double A level requirements. And um, 
there are con different countries requires different levels of um, accessibility. Uh, so in the United States, for example, it's known as Section 508, um, where anybody with a government contract, uh, they will be required to pass that. Uh, if you're doing a government website, essentially, it, you'll be required to fulfill this double A requirement. And uh, in other countries, there might be different laws. So uh, check the accessibility requirements. Okay, so now for the Figma users. Uh, in quarter one, we added a lot of new cards, components uh, to the Figma component sticker sheet. So now if you search for cards in Figma, you will see all these uh, new elements showing up. And uh, I know there are a lot of dashboard lovers at Eden. So these cards will help you speed up your pro prototyping process really, really fast. Uh, next, we added a, a few more advanced options for variant switcher. Variant switcher is a Figma plugin that allows you to batch switch instances, even when they do not came from the main component. So right now, um, if you haven't noticed yet, if you try to select multiple instances that does not come from the same main component, Figma will just show like this is the mix of thing and um, it will not show the usual uh, component switch or invariant switch options that uh, um, if you that will get shown if you select only one instance. And the uh, variant switcher try to solve that problem. Um, and uh, yeah, this uh, in this quarter we added three more options. We now have a switch full document option. Uh, we have exact match uh, that when you uncheck it, it will allow you to do a blurred search. And uh, finally, we have a main component name that you can specify so that uh, if you have multiple instances selected at once, uh, you can specify that among the instances I selected, I only want to select this thing with this specific name. Uh, all these three, uh, big shout out, all these three are features selected, uh, suggested by Figma's global design community that is outside Eden. So yeah, that's a great part about uh, working in an open source design system is you have community powers from inside and outside your current company. Finally, coming up, what's for the future? A uh, big, big, big shout out to CIP Center for Intelligent Power for all the effort on this. Uh, so if you haven't heard the rumor yet, we are working closely together to build a build and design a design, new design system for data visualization specifically. So uh, Brightler UI has traditionally been, as the name suggests, a UI design system. We focus primarily on digital applications, so web apps, uh, mobile apps in general. Uh, we notice that data visualization is heavily, heavily used in Eden's context because people tend to plot charts for, um, for the alarm history, for example. Uh, for device readings. And uh, a lot of you guys have actually been approaching us to ask uh, how exactly should the charts be standardized. And uh, we're really, really happy to announce that that is an ongoing effort. And uh, we are looking to, they're looking to have an MVP website to be released by uh, Q2. So for any questions or suggestions, definitely feel free to reach out to Brian Shenley or me um, via email. So this uh, new data design system would uh, include everything one would like to know for graphic charts at Eden, including the typical guiding principles that you also see on our websites. But there will also be case studies and uh, the suggested design and dev resources for the common frameworks, Angular, React, and React Native. 
Uh, next coming up, uh, a little bit of this dev updates uh, for teams on Angular and the React. Uh, in the next few weeks, our, uh, in fact, um, right now, uh, but in the, in the next few weeks or so, all our packages will be upgraded to be compatible with Angular or Angular Material 13 and the Material UI version 5, as well as React version 17, I believe. So any subsequent uh, style updates uh, from the design side, such as the icon additions, uh, theme changes, uh, bug fixes, they will be addressed in the latest version of these packages as listed on the right. So if your team plan to um, do any, uh, if you suggest any change to us, uh, be aware that your team would also need to upgrade their package JSON. Your developer friends will up, update their package JSON to the latest theme in order to pick up any changes that we made on our side. Um, next uh, uh, shout out is uh, for conferences updates. So um, as a reminder, Google I.O. is coming back and uh, it's coming back online and it's free, as free as uh, last year. It will be uh, May 11th through 12th this year and you can read about it more in their, on their webpage. So if this sounds like a really, really dev developer conference, uh, you are right, but it, is, it may not be 100% developer. So last year, I attended the conference last year, and they actually have the Material Design team releasing what they call the Material Design 3, also known as Material U. Uh, they also hosted panel discussions and uh, a few Ask Me Anything sessions. For a Q&A on topics, that includes the Material Design 3 that they just released, uh, as well as some customization and accessibility issues. Or if you want to learn a little bit about the front end developing, which I, I think is uh, totally great for UI designers who know these, because then you'll be able to know when to push for your design, what's the technical boundary. Uh, if you want to learn about these, uh, they have getting started sessions as well so that you can learn the cutting edge technology from essentially the people, those people who invented those. So I was encourage you to definitely give it a take it out. Um, yeah. And um, finally, uh, another shout out to Figma seminars. Uh, for those of you who prefer to st stay on the design side a little bit more, if you don't know yet, Figma, our principal design tools, they have free virtual events for all sorts of design topics across all kinds of time zones and uh, they the topic ranges from say pro tips to arrange your portfolio to how to do more things on the ux side like uh, how to facilitate workshop uh, how to scale your design system uh, if you want to if you want to build a design system of your own instead of using blue eye which will be very sad uh, you don't need to be a Figma user to participate. Uh, you don't even have to be, have, you don't, you, I believe you don't even need a Figma account. All you need to have is just a uh, Zoom. So definitely give it a look and see if you have any sessions, there's any sessions that you are interested in. Uh, you can learn about, more about it at this URL. So. Both Google I.O. and Figma, these are very, very good career development uh, conferences that or workshops that I would encourage people to take a look at. And that's the end. So all questions welcomed.